Recently, I was reminded of this meme, $500 client. I just feel as though with this investment I'm about to make in you, that we should understand how our lives are about to change and I need results and you need to bring them. I'm entrusting you with our livelihoods and lives. $50,000 client. Money sent. Thanks. And when I first saw this meme, I thought there's a lot of truth to this. Sometimes it feels that lower budget clients can have a lot higher expectations than what you would expect them to have. And higher paying clients seem to understand the video production process a little bit better because they probably have more experience in creating videos and how much they actually cost to be produced. When I first started doing video production, I thought that lower budget clients would have more realistic expectations and possibly even lower expectations compared to what higher budget clients have. But that's not actually always the case. I thought lower paying clients would be easier to impress and higher paying clients would be expecting the world. But that hasn't always been my personal experience. So what kind of clients should I be looking for? And if you're a video producer, what kind of clients should you be looking for? As video producers, should we be targeting lower budget clients and be doing a lot of those jobs? Or should we be targeting high budget clients and then doing fewer of those jobs but being paid more? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about working with lower budget clients and higher budget clients and my personal experience with those. Disclaimer, I will not be giving official financial advice in this video. This is just me talking about my personal experience with working with these different types of clients. As a video producer, I really like making videos that have a purpose and a positive message. And I've personally found that working with not-for-profits and churches does just that for me. And it's because of this that I'm willing to work with lower budgets and just try to do my best to make it fit. Obviously, if I'm working with lower budgets, I can't necessarily offer the client the world. However, I can do the best job that I can with my current equipment. And it's because of this that I'm willing to work with these groups and work with a lower budget to be able to create the videos that they're wanting to produce. I typically already own the cameras, the lenses, the lighting, the audio equipment, and all that kind of stuff that goes into creating a quality video. So I'm not needing to hire out extra gear. Uh, and a lot of the time, these videos don't need extra crew as well. It's just myself going into film. I can then take that footage, edit it together, and then deliver a high quality video that I'm personally proud of to that group. So they're the types of videos that I'm passionate about and they're the concessions that I'm willing to make in order to make those video projects happen. However, if I'm targeting myself at a low budget clientele, I might from time to time get clients that are just looking for the cheapest video at the cheapest price and aren't necessarily valuing the skills that I'm bringing to the table. This is definitely a trap that I'm aware of and is definitely something that I don't wanna fall into and hopefully you won't fall into as well. Then there are higher budget clients that are wanting videos produced that aren't typically that exciting, but definitely serve value for their business. Typically, these videos could be occupational health and safety or possibly even training videos. They aren't necessarily the kind of videos that light my fire, but they are videos that I'm able to produce and they definitely do serve value for the business. And for these projects, I'll typically charge my full rate and that can be broken up into a half day of filming or a full day of filming and then editing fees on top of that. Now, this brings us to a very important question. How much should I charge? And the answer to this is charge what you are worth. And I know you're probably rolling your eyes right now because you've heard that before, but the answer is true. You need to decide how much you are worth, just like I need to decide how much I'm worth. As video producers, we are all equipped with different things. We're equipped with different gear, different experience, and different skill sets. And for me to answer this question, I look at how much is my time worth, how much is my gear worth, and how much is my skill worth? For businesses these days, video is a big part of their digital strategy, but it isn't always feasible for them to have an in-house video production team. And that's why it might be a better idea for businesses to hire someone like myself or yourself as a video producer to create the content so they don't have to worry about purchasing thousands of dollars worth of gear, insuring it, and then getting people to be able to use it and then paying a salary on top of that. Also, if you're a video producer and you're scared to charge what you're worth because you think it might scare off potential clients, well, it might be those low budget clients that are actually holding you back from reaching a higher level and getting higher budgets to be able to produce the videos that you are actually passionate about. Now, if you're someone that is looking for a video producer to create video content for your business, then there are a few things to keep in mind. The first thing is all videos are not created equal. Asking a video producer how much does a video cost is kind of like asking them how long is a piece of string. The more detail you can give a video producer about your project, the more realistic and the more accurate the quote will end up being. 
In the past, I've had clients that have asked me, how much does it cost to shoot a video? And I would quote them my half day and full day rate, and then they would hear that, they would approve it, they'd book me in, and then they would be absolutely shocked to find out that there's actually additional charges in editing the video and getting something usable for them. This situation could have been avoided if more questions were asked by the client and myself to be able to figure out what was expected from this whole project. Initially, I was asked how much does it cost to film the project and I gave that answer and then they just assumed that that was all inclusive for the video process, that that included editing and delivering the video as well, which unfortunately it doesn't. My advice to people that are looking for video producers to create content for them is to ask as many questions as possible, give as much detail as possible, and if you have any visual references as well of what you're expecting the video to look like, send those through as well because then the video producer can look at that and then determine how they could recreate that video and achieve what you are expecting. And finally, I would suggest finding out exactly what is included in the quoted price. If you're expecting a five minute video, but the producer is only quoting for a two minute video, that's gonna be a problem down the track. The best way to avoid this is to clearly communicate what you're expecting, and then hopefully these problems won't pop up later in the video production process. And that's the video. I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel for more videos on video production in the future.